So I got these uh, Hunt 54 aerodynamics wheels back in June 2022. And within the first couple of days of receiving them, I noticed that the front wheel had some play. Uh, I hadn't ridden them at that point. So I contacted Hunt and they suggested I take them down to the nearest bike shop and get it looked at. Um, they said they would cover any of the repair costs and um, all spare parts. I did initially go down this route, but uh, life happened. So seven months on and 2,000 kilometers on the wheels, we are here. Just for context, the only way I've been able to capture the issue is via this audio recorder. Visual inspection, you know, pressing on the axle and seeing if the bearings move hasn't revealed anything. And switching out the end caps hasn't provided a fix. So thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a hub tear down and see how it's all put together. Uh, my intention is not to discredit Hunt or throw them under the bus. I'm sure if I contacted them again, they would uh, follow it up and provide a, a solution. But just to satiate my own curiosity we're doing this now straight off the bat i ordered some replacement bearings um hunt uses 6802 bearings in their front wheels on their aerodynamics liner wheels and uh i picked up some hambini spec uh, ntns which should be very nice now 6802 is tiny um, and it got me thinking are there any other brands that use 6802 bearings with a half-assed google search later i couldn't find any even the super lightweight hubs from Carbon Tie and Extra Light use 6803 bearings, which are slightly bigger. The small bearing on the end, that's the 6802 in the Hunt wheel. And the slightly bigger bearing, 6803, that's the Carbon Tie and Extra Light just mentioned. And right at the end, that's a 6903 bearing. That's what D Swiss use in both their 240 and 350 hubs. Now, I'm not going to throw any shade, but I have seen fidget spinners with larger bearings. Uh, moving on quickly. I've taken a couple of ballpark measurements of the hub, uh, drawn this up in CAD, and then sliced it down the middle just so we can see what's going on. This is, uh, isn't is accurate, but it's a good visual representation of what's going on. The hub is simply two bearings pressed in onto an axle. The axle is, from what I understand, is slightly oversized, which uh, pushes out on the bearings on the inner races, creating the preload needed. So the play is likely in the tolerance fit either between the bearings and the axle or the bearings and the hub. Something's moving that shouldn't be, so our best bet is to repress with a new set of bearings and some Loctite. So I have a small amount of knowledge of CAD and a 3D printer. So I made myself out of PLA a bearing drift um, to press the bearing in straight, a uh, spacer to push the axle into the bearing and a cup or extractor to catch the bearing on the other end. Now you don't need to do this if you've got a socket set lying around, a 17mm and 20mm will do you just fine. Oh, and a couple of washers. Now, I started with the centre lock side just because the tool I had has better purchase on that side. And then I used the drift to push the axle through, which pushed out the bearing. Once the axle was out, did a visual inspection. The axle looks very clean, no signs of galling or anything like that. And in fact, it looks like it's had a very easy life. Out of interest, took some measurements. Not sure what it says really. No obvious asymmetry or anything like that. Did the same process to get the bearing on the other side out. This one was noticeably stiffer. Popped out with a satisfying ting. Just to be safe, I cleaned everything off with some isopropyl alcohol. I wiped down all the surfaces just to make sure any sort of kind of stray grease or anything that would contaminate the bearings or the seats was out there. Now with the Loctite, I find doing a small dab and then rotating the wheel and letting the Loctite flow is the best way to apply a, a nice thin coating. Here's me with a paper towel trying to clean up after I put way too much and you know try my best not to get it everywhere. Now I would say you've got to be really careful when pressing the bearings. Even the smallest misalignment can cause damage to the hub and reduce the lifespan of the bearing. Because of this I used a metal drift instead to press the bearing in halfway. As you can see the drift mates with the inner race of the bearing which makes it really valuable if you can get hold of one. At this point if you take the hub and you push the axle into the bearing that's just been seated. You can see on the reverse side, the axle will want to sit perpendicular if you apply a little bit of force. Now, the distance between the axle and the edge of the hub should be even all the way around. Um, if it's not, that is indicative of a bearing that's been pressed in slightly ajar. And if that's the case, you'll need to remove it and do it again. 
Now it's the same process on this side, but this time you have the axle in the bike. Uh, make sure the axle is the right way around. Uh, the longer side is points towards the center lock. This is where the 3D printed drifts uh, began to show their limits. The plastic PLA compresses slightly, so it lacked the feedback of the bearing being pressed into its seat. Once it's all done, make sure the wheel spins smoothly. Um, if it feels even the slightest bit grindy, it could mean one of the bearings isn't aligned. And if the axle's moving around, it means the bearings haven't been pressed in enough. Hopefully this guy was useful. Sorry it wasn't the most in-depth, I've never done one of these before. Given the lack of technical resources provided by Hunt, I know this would be useful to have out there. If you have any questions, leave them below. And yeah. I think I've seen oversized pulley wheels with bigger bearings.